This week, we're going back to a topic that has really been controversial for a long time, even within progressive circles. It's the topic of genetically modified food. We often hear from some that we just don't really know anything about the health impacts of genetically modified food, and that is actually not true. We really do have a lot of studies done about GMO food. And we're going back to an interview from August of 2013 with George Church, who's a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. He is uh, an authority on genetically modified food. This is an interview which angered a lot of people, and it is an interview that pleased a lot of people because they said, David, I am really glad that you are just digging into this issue as opposed to accepting one so-called side's view on genetically modified food. So this is still a topic of much debate. We're going back to August of 2013 for my interview with George Church. Joining me today is George Church. He is professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School, also a director of personalgenomes.org, providing the world's only open access information on human genomic, environmental, and trait data. Uh, professor Church, it's really great to have you on. And in fact, a number of our viewers suggested we talk to you. And the premise, which really was directed by our audience, was some people notice what they describe, what they characterize as kind of a knee jerk reaction, particularly on the political left to be against genetically modified food just on principle. And the the suggestion from the audience was talk to somebody like Professor Church and let's actually figure out what scientific data do researchers have about the health effects of genetically modified food that are separate from whether that food is or is not organic is or is not processed foods. And let's see if we can really drill drill that part down. So I think that's a good place to start. What research does exist about specifically the health effects of food that has been genetically modified? Uh, so so it's definitely not as much research as we would like. Uh, there there have been um, a few publications that I know of from around 2004, 2011, 2012. Uh, most of them uh, get some pushback uh, because they're, the, the sample size is too small, say 10 rather than 60. Rodents in a, in a carcinogenesis uh, study on glyphosate and uh, maize corn. Um, and, and and you could say, and sometimes the responses to the criticisms aren't aren't satisfyingly direct. In other words, they aren't really answering the criticisms. But nevertheless, I think the main thing is uh, we need more research. Um, like almost anything involving uh, foods and drugs and the FDA, and USDA, and so forth, we it, it's um, uh, probably underfunded, understudied. Uh, but there, relatively, there's studies on rodents. There's studies on farm animals that have been fed. Uh, these foods for a long time. Humans obviously have been in a less controlled manner, less controlled scientifically. Um, but anyway, there's just there's not that much data. And like like things where there are high economic uh, uh, stakes, like global warming and so forth, they're going to be people on both sides. So, is what what would be a fair statement? In other words. In the abundance of caution and speaking only about what we have, we have some data about. Are you comfortable at all right now falling on the side that there is a health risk to consuming genetically modified foods? Are you, would you fall more on the side of saying that you think that there is no risk or simply that it is a question mark? Uh, maybe none of those three. I would say there is a health risk of eating foods in general. Uh, and it's not a one size fits all, meaning that there, and I, based on the data that I've seen so far, um, there's much greater health risks in the food supply than the GM part of it. In other words, there are health risks to certain individuals due to diabetes because uh, there's sucrose in, in foods more than ever before. Hmm. There's gluten, there's lactose, there's cholesterol. There are all kinds of things. And I'm very much pro labeling. Um, not just labeling for GM, but for various other things. But there, there are very, very few, if if any, uh, cases, medical cases, um, for GM components to a disease. And there's a lot of cases for these other things. Uh, 
So I'm, I'm interested in one aspect you talked about, which is that you're for labeling and we are as well on this program. So I'm sure you're, you're somewhat aware, at least of the campaigns that have been going on in states like California, where G GM foods should be labeled. And of course, millions of dollars have poured in from from very large food companies who are against that. They claim on the grounds merely of of cost, not of wanting to really hide anything that may be unhealthy. So I'm curious along those lines, do you think that in the same way that there are corporate interests that don't want GM labeling, are there corporate interests and you as a researcher you know, might know this, are there corporate interests fighting real research about the health effects of GM foods? Uh, I, I'm not aware of anyone fighting against doing research. I think there are people that might be critiquing research that is that, that's uh, being published um, or was or is being designed in a shoddy way. Hmm. The best time to critique these studies is, of course, before they occur. Uh, the best way to make them better studies is to f fund them. Um, you know, there may not there may not be a rush to fund to, to fund something that you already believe to be true. In other words, a non-scientist, uh, a non-scientist CEO might not want to uh, fund something that they believe is not an issue, um, but they—I don't think they would necessarily block it. Um, hmm. But there might be cases uh, of, of people feeling it's a waste of money. What would be the ideal way to really test what what we're talking about here? In other words, if you could design a study where money was no object, and and you could just put together a study to really isolate the genetically modified component of foods as the variable whose whose effects we're testing, how would you put that together? What would be the ideal way to study that? Well, the ideal way, putting aside some realities for a moment, would be to study it in human beings. There are plenty of, of human uh, uh, subject-based uh, uh, research for foods and drugs. It's hard to do foods because people are undisciplined, even if they're paid to participate in a research study. Um, but it could be done, and that would be the best. That would be the best way. I, I should mention that you know some of the some of the uh, critique uh, of GM foods is not just the, the GM part; it's the it's other chemicals that come along with it. But 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 you're right to just focus in on the GM part. Ideally, you would you would uh, have a large clinical trial, essentially, with human beings involved. That's that's uh, fantastic. So, what do you think is going to be the next step in terms of of this kind of discussion over GM foods, and what would you like it to, it to be? Putting aside the research that's going to be done, I don't know how much you pay attention to to the, the discussions of GM foods, kind of in in traditional media. But do you think that there's even a reasonable discussion being had about GM foods in most media, or is really the point being missed altogether? Uh I tend to think that there, there is a reasonable discussion. I, I think there's great value in having uh, con uh, a little controversy, a little uh, discussion, because it, it has the possibility of getting people to spend a little more time thinking about the science. If they think that, especially if they think that's how it's going to be decided in the marketplace, if they think science is going to be part of that, then they will get more up to speed. And anything that, that brings our population up to speed on science would be great. Um, because that is, there's many technologies, not just GM foods, where we need to have a very highly educated population. Um, so that would, that would be one um, good aspect of the current conversation that's going on. Uh, a little emotion is not necessarily a harmful thing, uh, but, in, but there has to be mixed in, and is, I think, with uh, looking at, at the data. The problem is there's more heat than light. Uh, there's not quite as much uh, data as there should be. Hmm. Uh, I think going forward, the labeling is going to be uh, key, and more and more, I think people are going to uh, not try to find a, an umbrella label like these are good foods and these are bad foods. You know, like everything labeled organic is good uh, because it's much more fine grain than that. It's much more personalized. It's like medicine needs to be personalized. Your food needs to be as well. So you'll go to the supermarket with, say, your cell phone as a barcode scanner, or you'll just decide before you go there using your computer to personalize your diet. Um, and I suspect that, that once people go into detail about the risks of various foods, uh, they'll find that GM is the least of their worries. They should mm -hmm. be worrying about cholesterol and, and uh, cane sugar and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, 
bacteria, pathogenic bacteria that are present on their foods uh, that aren't necessarily uh, been tested. We've been speaking with George Church. He's professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School. Also check out personalgenomes.org, where Professor Church is the director. Really a pleasure to have you on, sir. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.